Luca stepped from the blind eternities and is hit with the humidity and heat that lets him know that he landed in a jungle full of life or something close to it. He reaches out with his magic, senses beasts, small and large, scurrying through trees, chasing prey, hiding. It's a close proximity to nature, but from what he knows of New Phyrexia, Luca doesn't drop his guard. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, we continue with this story of Phyrexia All Will Be One, stepping away from the main story to explore how one of the planeswalkers of the original strike team becomes completed. Luca, the militaristic outcast of Ikoria, was a surprise inclusion to the strike team formed by Jace Balaran to infiltrate New Phyrexia. I had predicted that Luca made a juicy completion target, mostly because his story has always been kind of, well, shaky. I was proven right as Wizards of the Coast unveiled Luca's new completed Planeswalker card, Luca Bound to Ruin. In this video, we're going to take a look at Luca's travels through New Phyrexia and exactly how he came to this fate. Remember, if you're enjoying the content here at the Ether Hub, show your support by leaving this video a like, becoming a subscriber, and of course sharing it with your friends. Now let's continue on with the story, Hard as Anger, Bright as Joy, written by Langley Hyde. As Luca looked around his surroundings, after having been blown off course as he planeswalked to New Phyrexia, he's surprised to find just how full of life this so-called corrupted plane was. When the planeswalker Jace Balaran first approached Luca, he was defensive, believing the Mind Mage had come because of his actions on Ikoria or at the School of Strixhaven. However, Jace came to offer him a position on a mission. A mission that would protect Ikoria from a terrible fate. Despite his mistakes, Luca cared for his world regardless how his people felt towards him. Jace believed his military experience would prove useful in this infiltration mission, and here he found himself, separated from his troops. Judging from his surroundings, Luca believed he landed in the Hunter Maze, a sphere loosely described by Jace before they traveled. His first order of business was to reconnect with his team. This wasn't going to be a successful solo mission. Luca thinks to himself, if he can find a creature of this world, he could perhaps dominate it, use its knowledge of this place to find a way out. He climbed up a mechanical tree for a better vantage. As he reaches the top, he hears cries of battle and beasts, winged Phyrexians swooping down on prey desperately fighting for survival. The prey? A willowy elf and a pale woman whose swordplay flowed like water. He had met them before. This was Nyssa and the one known as the Wanderer, allies. They were holding their own, the Wanderer's graceful strikes removing limbs with ease, as Nyssa sprouted shining metallic leaves from the surrounding foliage, using their razor edges in a swirling gale of death to the Phyrexians gathered around them. Still, they were in danger from a foe unseen. Luca unsheaths his harpoon. He sees a hawking Phyrexian centaur skulking the trees, watching the battle, waiting for the opportune moment to strike from the canopy. The Wanderer below flickered from existence, odd timing to planeswalk, Luca thought, as he turns his attention to the beast, another creature for him to dominate. His magic reached out to the Phyrexian's mind, grabbing onto the little remaining biological parts left within its skull. It was enough for Luca to find purchase and squeeze the Phyrexian's will until it was broken. Luca had dominated a Phyrexian, bonded with it. Nissa had ended the rest of the enemies, as Luca jumped down riding atop his captured monster. Nissa was at first happy to see an ally, but upon recognizing the militaristic Luca, her expression changed. She didn't know much about the man, but what she did, she didn't like. Still, it was a semi-friendly face. Luca's plan was to use the knowledge of this bond to find the surface of this lair, get the lay of the land, then find his way to Elish Norn's domain to meet up with the others. Nyssa begrudgingly agrees, but makes it known that bonding with a Phyrexian is a terrible idea. There's no saying who controls who in this type of relationship. Luca simply believes his will is stronger. He is stronger and can handle it, but reassures Nyssa that if he feels even so much as a stomach ache, he'll end the Phyrexian. The Hunter Maze lived up to its name. Its winding tree lines made it nearly impossible to get your bearings. Luca had once been a tactical star on Ikoria, leading the Coppercoats against monsters twice as imposing as his new Phyrexian partner. But here he felt lost. The years of feeling like an outcast, a failure. He felt so much stronger than others perceived him to be, but not now. He hadn't always been as tall, as strong as he was now. Once before he'd hit his growth in adolescence, a group of older boys had cornered him. 
Already he'd known he was different, though he hadn't understood how. On some level, the other boys had sensed it too, an invisible barrier that prevented him from being one of them. They cornered him, five to one. He decided to retreat, but they tripped him. He had to choose while curled up against the blows raining down, his head or his ribs. He'd wrapped his arms over his skull, and he endured. He'd show them later, of course, they'd regret it. The trees hid many Phyrexian creatures. They seemed to murmur to him, imagine the power, they would say over and over. But just then, a flash of light, a woman screaming, watch out, as a leathery Phyrexian swoops down to remove their heads. It grabs at Nyssa and pins her arm down, preventing her magic or even from her drawing her sword. As they fell over, Luca's mind melds with the Phyrexian partner, asking for it to secure him, which it does in a very invasive way. Viney wires sprung from the beast and plunged into Luca's chest. There was no pain, only the feeling of security and power. Luca's body and his Phyrexian became one, as it braces the Planeswalker's fall and lifts them up in a defensive stance, pulling his harpoon out and slinging it at the attacking enemies, killing it with a decisive strike. Smaller, scavenging Phyrexians jump on the corpse, whispering words only Luca hears. Only the fittest deserve to survive. They were right, he thought. Luca was still there mentally, still on mission, and with no other option besides planes walk away and give up, Nyssa continues on. The words grow stronger, louder. You deserve power, you are strong. Here, strength is rewarded, the weak are called. They wander into a metallic paradise full of oozing berries pulsing with black oil. A cave lined by fleshy intestinal walls seemed to beckon them in. Luca hadn't realized how beautiful this place was until now. Their own surroundings seem to fight against them, as the cave releases a swarm of grub-like Phyrexians that clawed and bit at the planeswalkers like leeches. A simple scratch could cost them their lives. Then, a bright light. The Wanderer had reappeared to jump into action despite seeming a bit confused. Her blade worked in tandem with Nyssa's magic and the brute strength of Luca's bonded monster. The cave walls began to shudder around them. This was no cave, but another Phyrexian horror looking to consume its prey. They all leapt out just in time, thanks in part to the speed of Luca's new… body. While the three planeswalkers made it out, Luca's bonded centaur Phyrexian was caught in the maw. Its pain became Luca's pain. How wrong he was thinking initially it was a mindless, mechanical, and emotionless creature. With superhuman strength and speed, Luca leapt to free his companion. These changes don't seem so bad to me, Nyssa. They're useful more than anything else, he thinks to himself. His fingers become sharp, cutting like steel, as his monster frees itself and rejoins its master. They continue on. Lucas says they're almost near the maze's center. Nyssa corrects him, they're trying to get out, right? Luca remembered, yes, they wanted to escape and not move inward. When did his mission change in his mind, he wondered. They turn to the Wanderer, asking if she's seen the others in her sporadic travels. What should they do? She says she only spotted Vorinclax, the green predator who skulks this realm. She knows where he is. Nyssa and Luca both agree that attacking Vorinclax is off mission. They need to regroup with the others. But the Wanderer convinces them that this is a unique opportunity to remove a powerful ally of Elish Norns from the board. They shouldn't squander it. Nyssa and Luca find their own reasons to agree, and so the mission changes. Now they turn to kill Vorinclax, who sits at the maze's center. As Luca's companion leads them inwards, they hear the sounds of a fight. They look out to see the giant beast Vorinclax fighting one-on-one -on -one against a completed elf. Nyssa recognizes the figure from Jace's briefings. It was Glissa, a powerful Phyrexian commander who was first completed by Vorinclax. The Praetor met the elf's attack blow for blow, pairing with his stiffened appendages and countering as Glissa stumbled back. Luca saw this as a dance, a struggle for power. It made sense to him now. The Wanderer again wanders, leaving just Nyssa and Luca. The three may have been able to take Glissa and Vorinclex, but now it seemed hopeless. They should abandon this mission and continue to the others. Nyssa may feel this way, but Luca is surging with strength, along with the desire to prove that strength. They can take them. Besides, has she already forgotten his Phyrexian abomination? It was still technically three on two. Luca threw himself at Glissa while Nyssa took on Vorinclex. Glissa spun with a hiss and threw up her clawed hands in defense. Luca didn't need a weapon to attack her. He too had his own claws. He exchanged blows with Glissa and she grinned. They were perfectly matched. 
He hadn't felt like this in years, not since his last great sparring match with the Coppercoats. Glissa seemed to feel the same, and he could hear himself laughing, laughing with pure happiness. But then, Luca stumbled. He called out for his companion who answered perfectly. It protected Luca without question, offering him power beyond his understanding. They fused even more. Its spine became his spine. Its lungs breathed for Luca. Its strength was added to his own. He was now fully combined with his Phyrexian. With a final snap, their minds merged. Luca now saw the beauty of this sphere and how Vorinclex dominated everything. His strength was the only law, a law Luca now respected. The Praetor turned towards his new thrall, commanding Luca to attack Nyssa. Only the strong survive, and Luca was now strong. Nyssa is shocked and horrified at the sight, a newly Phyrexianized Luca. Finally, she feared him. Finally, she respected him. This was how it's meant to be. The voices grow louder. This is how it's supposed to be. The strong triumphing over the weak. This is what it means to live. There are those who take it. Then there are those who deal it. Nyssa guarded with her sword. Luca didn't need a weapon. He was the weapon. The Wanderer flickered back in, watching a struggling Nyssa retreating from the Phyrexian Planeswalker. She only held her place on New Phyrexia for a moment, yelling at Nyssa to run before planeswalking away. Nyssa broke away from the fight and dashed for safety. Glissa reached out to her new ally, commanding Luca to hunt Nyssa and bring her back to Vorinclex alive. She would be useful in the war to come on New Phyrexia. Beside him, he heard Vorinclex low, growling laughter. He felt the vicarious pleasure that Glissa took in his confidence, and he felt himself smile. The Hunter Maze was expansive, and beautiful, and terrible, and it was time to go hunting. And that, you guys, is the story of how Luca became completed in Phyrexia All Will Be One. The reason I wanted to cover this story was because it fills in some lost information that we just didn't get in the main stories. First, obviously, it's how Luca becomes completed, but it also gives us a glimpse of Nissa's time on New Phyrexia, which isn't really explored in the main articles. We just hear from Jace that he saw her flicker away, but obviously, she ended up here in the Hunter Maze and is now being hunted by Luca. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Let me know your thoughts of the new Luca Bound to Ruin in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, show your support by leaving it a like, becoming a subscriber, and sharing it with your friends. As always, until next time, guys, see ya!